In this lecture, we'll talk about the organizational perspective and what are called levels of management. Many organizations actually have multiple levels of management. Top management, what's called middle management, and then first line or supervisory management. These levels form a kind of a pyramid as shown in this slide. As the pyramid shape implies, there are generally more middle managers than there are top managers and more first line managers and supervisors than there are middle managers. Very small organizations may only have one manager, typically the owner, who assumes the responsibility of all three of these levels. Large businesses have many managers at each level to coordinate the use of the organization's resources. Essentially, someone is in middle management if they have other people managing additional employees and resources that report to them. Managers that deliver actual work to customers or product are called line managers. They have employees working to, for them, but they don't have other managers who are also managing other people reporting to them. That's the distinction with middle management generally. Managers at all three levels of management perform all five of the management functions we described, but the time spent on each function varies as you move up the chain of responsibility. This slide displays the importance of the management functions as an example uh, for, as an illustration uh, for managers at each level. First line managers spend more time controlling, for example, in general, whereas senior managers spend more time planning. Middle managers are somewhere in the middle. Of course, someone who was in the finance organization, the controller's organization, might spend a lot of time controlling, but they're really managing and planning the controlling function for the organization. So this, actual, this, uh, this slide still applies even in the controller's organization. For top managers, the most important management function is planning. Middle managers consume the function of organizing and a lot of staffing, for example, while the first, five, first line members are executing and controlling, if you will. In business, top management includes the president and other top executives, such as the chief executive officer, chief financial officer, chief operations officer, chief technical officer, chief marketing officer. This is called people that are that have that C in front of them, the chief in front of them. They're called C-suite, S-U-I-T-E, C-suite executives because they are in the, that very top position for their particular function. They have overall responsibility for the company. With advances in technology and the like, um, you also have problems sometimes with uh, with security and, and, and personal information. So there's sometimes a chief privacy officer, for example, and people add different roles at that top tier. Top level managers spend most of their time planning. They make the organization strategical decisions, decisions that focus on the overall scheme of where the organization is going or the key idea for using resources to take advantage of opportunities. Compensation committees are increasingly working with boards of directors and the CEOs to attempt to keep pay, pay in line with the performance of individuals in order to benefit stockholders and other key stakeholders. Successful management translates into happy stockholders who are willing to compensate their top executives fairly and in line with performance. Workforce diversity is an important issue in today's corporations. Effective managers are enlightened at enlightened corporations have found that diversity is good for workers and to, all the way from the middle management down to the bottom line and, and it's good for the bottom line. Putting together different kinds of people to solve problems all, often results in better solutions. For only 4.6% of Fortune 500 CEOs are women. Let's look at Facebook as an example. Mark Zuckerberg, he's the CEO and founder of Facebook. 
He managed the overall strategic direction of the company and plays a key role in representing the company to stakeholders. Sheryl Sandberg, Facebook's, Facebook's chief operating officer, is responsible for the daily operation of the company. The COO reports to the CEO and is often considered be the, to be the number two person in command. In public corporations, even chief executive officers have a boss, and that boss is the board of directors. In 2012, it was announced that Mike Zuckerberg would go from his current salary of $600,000 to an annual salary of just $1, remembering, of course, that he is a major owner of the company, so he gets much of his much value from his ownership of, the, of his Facebook stock. Given the importance and range of top managers' decisions, top managers generally have many years and varied level, various types of experience, and therefore they command top salaries. In addition to salaries, top manager managers' compensation packages typically include bonuses that are often related to performance, uh, most often related to performance. They have long-term incentive rewards for causing shareholder value to grow, such as stock and stock options, which pay out as the company succeeds. The table on this slide lists the compensation packages of different CEOs. Top management may also get perks and special treatment that is often criticized by shareholders. Examples of this might be uh, memberships at country clubs and the like. Let's talk about some rules, some ideas for getting being successful at diversity and recruiting employees and managers. Managers from companies devote their uh, devote considerable time into trying to match the workforce of an organization with its stakeholders uh, set uh, in order to make sure that all of the needs of, of their customers and other stakeholders are are are, are understood and are, are formed part of the objectives for the organization. Some ways to do that is get everybody involved, educate all employees on the needs for diversity and the tangible benefits of diversity in terms of understanding all the various needs of the stakeholders and supporting them. Uh, you get enthusiasm from the workers for that. You, uh, you showcase your diversity. Prospective employees, employees are not likely to become excited about joining your company if they think your company is not diversity friendly, but they will if you say or you are diversity friendly and they can see it. They work with diversity groups within the community, supporting community-based organizations and the like, so word of mouth will show that this company does indeed support the notion of diversity. And they spend serious money in terms of diversity recruiting to bring in the right skill sets um, into those final interview process. And then sell, sell, sell um, the idea, uh, measuring your return on investment, showing how the organization uh, performs, why diversity is good for not only the business, but also for all the employees involved, and present an uh, a convincing case as to why it's good for the company and for the employees to have a diverse workforce. It's Diverse workforce is better at making decisions regarding issues that relate to consumer diversity or stakeholder diversity, reaching fast-growing demographic groups such as Hispanics, African Americans, Asian Americans, and others uh, is very is helped with when you have diversity within one's own workforce. So large companies who target these markets benefit tangibly by in terms of their product offerings and entering these new markets by being diverse. Let's talk now about the middle, middle managers in an organization. Rather than thinking about the strategic decisions that, that occupy senior management or top management, middle managers are responsible for tactical planning to implement the general guidelines established by top management. Thus, their responsibility is more narrowly focused than that of top managers. Middle managers are involved in the specific operations of the organization. They spend time organizing what other managers do. They spend more time in the organizing function than do senior managers, and also more so than the line managers. In business, plant managers, division managers, department managers, they are the middle manager, the kind of the core of the middle management ranks. 
the ranks of middle managers have been shrinking as more and more companies downsize and make use of technologies and social social media internet technologies to improve the communication flow which generally takes up much of a middle manager's time as technology improves communication and awareness among employees the need for middle managers goes down. So that's one of the, the key trends in business today to keep in mind as you're thinking about your career moves. First line managers are right at the front lines, which is why they have that, that title. Most people get their first experience in management as first line managers. Those are the ones that supervise some workers in daily operations in the organization. They're responsible for implementing the plans established by middle management and directing workers daily performance on the job as they spend most of their time directing and then controlling. Common titles for first line managers are things like foreman, supervisor, service manager, uh, those kinds of job titles. 